Greetings, y'all. In this episode of Purple Bear Biology, we're going to talk about two groups of seed plants, gymnosperms and angiosperms. We're going to pick up this episode where we left off with mosses and ferns. If you missed that video, you can find the link for it in the description below. This episode is going to cover three main topics. One, how a gymnosperm and an angiosperm have adapted to land. Two, the general parts of a flower of an angiosperm. And three, how pollen and seeds get dispersed. So let's get started. Gymnosperms and angiosperms are going to add three new adaptations to flourish on land. First, they are no longer going to rely on water to transport their gametes. Instead, sperm is transferred in a secure structure called pollen. Second, gametophytes are no longer going to develop from a single spore. They grow on the sporophyte structure. In this way, these plants are able to provide nutrients and resources needed for our next adaptation. Third, these plants have seeds. Not only do these seeds provide a mechanism for dispersal, but they provide vital nutrients to help the new offspring get a jump start in life, increasing their likelihood of survival. In addition to those adaptations, angiosperms develop flowers. These flowers serve as a colorful beacon to recruit pollinators to help disperse their sperm. All right, now that we've talked about their adaptations, let's talk a little bit more about flowers and the basic structures. Flowers can be divided up into sepals that protect the developing petals, petals that mostly attract pollinators, male parts that make the pollen, which are collectively called the stamen, and female parts collectively called the pistil, that will be responsible for making the fruits and seeds. The female structures can be broken down into four main pieces. The stigma, which is responsible for receiving pollen. The style is the structure that the sperm from the pollen travels through. Technically speaking, sperm travels through a pollen tube, but that goes through the style. The last two parts are the ovary, that houses the ovules. The ovary will develop into the fruits and the ovules develop into the seeds. So now that we understand the basic parts, how does the pollen get from the stamen to the stigma? The diversification of these adaptations are incredible, but the three primary ways are wind, water, and animal. Why do the animals help the plants? The plants provide an incentive of a sugar in the form of nectar. Nectar can be made up of up to 75% of that sugary sweet stuff. Once pollination and fertilization take place, a seed or multiple seeds will form. So how do these seeds get dispersed? Wind, water, and through animal poop, or even hitching a ride. Growing up too close to their parents would mean that they have to compete with their parents for resources. That's a big shadow. So let's summarize what we have learned. One, gymnosperms and angiosperms have developed three new adaptations. Pollen, a gametophyte that grows off of the sporophyte, and seed. Two, angiosperms have specialized structures like flowers to attract in pollinators, and their ovaries develop into the fruit and the ovules develop into the seeds. And three, both pollen and seeds are dispersed using wind, water, and animals. Well, that's it for this episode of Purple Bear Biology, y'all. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. See y'all later.